My setup today is a bit less than ideal. My tripod broke, so I'm facing the opposite way that I usually do, and I've got the light from the windows and everything behind me instead of facing me for better lighting. So, uh, let's see if I put another light here, if that does anything. Mm. I don't know, but anyway. So, I think it should still work fine. I ordered a new tripod, so it should be here before. <coughs> before too long. Okay, so today I thought it would be really fun to do a kind of back to basics and talk about different kinds of hair pins. I have a whole bunch of different kind of hair pins from regular old bobby pins to hair pins to Amish pins to U pins, giant U pins. Swerve and uh, spin pin. So, <clears throat> basically, I think I'm going to talk about what each one is good for and then demonstrate it in a hairstyle. So, let's start with the good old bobby pin. There's disagreement about whether you're supposed to use the ridge side against your head or the flat side, but I will say this decorative bobby pin I have has the ridges on the top, so the flat side would go against your head. And some people say that's wrong. A lot of people also say it just makes no difference at all. So um, maybe this is to help with grip. Um, I've heard that you can put hairspray on it to help it with grip. I don't have any hairspray, so I don't know, but that is something that I've been told. So a bobby pin is best used. Um, not for updos, but for like pinning down flyaways or, you know, little side pieces, um, something that's going to be flat against your head. So for some of them, you really have to prop them open first, it looks like. So slide it in and then make it more secure by taking a second one and making an X shape. And then if you get the color that matches your hair, nobody can see it for the most part. But you can also go really decorative with bobby pins. I have this one from Lila Rose. They have a bunch of bobby pins with really beautiful designs on them. These are extremely strong. You don't want to be trying to peel these open. These ones you would just slide in without opening. So same thing, they could be nice just along the side as a little accent. And you wanna pull them out, well, push them out very, very carefully because they are so tight, they can snag your hair, but they don't have to if you're very careful with it. Um, and I recommend getting, they have some super strong, nice bobby pins that I've heard about on Amazon. And I'll have the link in the description for all of these. Um, these ones are like regular drugstore ones. These ones are from the Dollar Tree. And even though they both look like bobby pins, the Dollar Tree ones are terrible. They don't work for anything. So I do not recommend getting those. This more like mid-range one is fine. <clears throat> the next style of pin is what I graduated to when I discovered the long hair community. The Amish pin. So this is a stainless steel U shape. Um, this is the three inch long. I really like the three inch long ones. And I thought like, that's gonna fall right under my hair. How are you supposed to use that? Well, you don't use it in the same way, um, but it is really good for holding the ends in on a bun. So let me show you just really any kind of bun, but I'm gonna do a, um, let's see. Yeah, I'll do a braided pinless. Even though it's called pinless, I usually do still put one Amish pin in it. And you can put them like all the way around a braid, but if you're, if you've got a nice secure braid that, or not braid, nice secure bun, um, then you usually just need one of them to secure just the ends into the style. And then. This is where we use the pin. I'm gonna tuck the 
end figure out where the end of the end is and just slide the pin right in there and that's gonna hold it <laughs> really really well so just about any kind of the standard buttons that you are aware of you can use a single Amish pin to keep the ends up in there next I'm gonna talk about this big old pin these are also Leo Rose and they have lots of fun decorations on them and they're nice and strong. You can use these in a few different kinds of things. You can use them in buns, you can use them in a French twist, um, and you can use them in a cornet braid. So since I already have my braid in, I'll go ahead and do it very tight there. Wrap it around my head and tuck, tuck, tuck. And now these you're gonna kind of face the long the wrong way around and then turn them and push so just like with a hair fork and I would put an Amish pin in just again to see here where the where the braid goes in strange noise happening out there. I also have like these ones. So out and turn around and in. I like that because it makes the braid kind of pop up a little bit too. Let me show you the French twist with these. Okay, I'm going to hold this by, face the pins away, and put them in. Turn them and push back in. Where's my matching one? There it is. Face the pin away, put it through some hair, turn it, push in. My French twists look ridiculous because I have too much hair for them, but. <laughs> you that? Either the swerve. I like to use this for top knots too, because it's a little, little tiara effect on the top. Or this nice, plain, beautiful uh, large e pin. So, this one, it really functions a lot like a hair fork. And then, if you don't like to have anything showing and sticking out of your buns, these are incredibly strong and hold a lot of hair really, really well. They are just like screws. You take your hairstyle, stick this at the end, and start screwing it into your hair. And then you know, do a few of them. But you'll need far fewer than if you were to try to do this with regular bobby pins. Do not try to do this with regular bobby pins. And then you find the end of it and you just unscrew it. So I discovered these this year. I mean, I knew about them, but I didn't try them till this year. And now I'm like, wow. You must have these. They are amazing. Even Goody makes these. You can get these all kinds of places now. Um, they usually sell them in like a pack of three or so, which is enough to do an updo like that because they hold a ton. Let's see, what else did I want to do? And then there's um, this kind of hairpin. So this is kind of a cross between an Amish pin and a bobby pin. And I can't actually say that I use these much, but they came with something. Um, hi! So I think they would they would be um, a replacement for Amish pins. They came with my hair donut thing, so you know if you're doing like a a sock bun, then you can secure the hair to it with those. Hi. <laughs> Depending on the kind of styles that you like to do, I would for sure have spin pins, Amish pins. 
showing you pins. But, um, hi. <laughs> but if you have a lot of flyaways, um, or like on my neck like this, I like to bobby pin these up. Those are for me. Um, then you would want bobby pins, or again, you can do the little decorative bobby pins on the side. When I didn't chew it. Oh, you swallowed one whole? Yes. All right, you'll survive. I'm not chewing it. Yeah, I understand. It's not ideal, but you'll be okay. So, any questions you have, let me know in the comment box. Be sure to check the link in the description box to sign up for my weekly roundup newsletter. You're going to get a few goodies like an exclusive hairstyle tutorial, a free printable, and the opportunity to purchase my ebook, Hair Oils and How to Use Them at Half Price. So, again, link is in the description box, and I look forward to seeing you next time.